we Australians will be asked to vote on the idea of the voice to Parliament being embedded in the Federal Constitution. My family and I have worked and lived alongside Indigenous communities. I went to school with Indigenous people since the 1820s. And I am firmly in favour of Australians recognising their unique status as those who lived here for so long before other non-Indigenous Australians. I'm also deeply supportive of substantial, material and practical efforts to address the challenges that have undoubtedly gripped a portion, though not all, of Indigenous Australians. I do, though, have grave concerns that this particular policy will only worsen the problems and indeed I work with many Indigenous leaders who share my concerns. Over the years, we've had numerous voices to Parliament. I can think of around seven major voices, bodies set up to be a voice to the Federal Parliament. None of them have achieved that ultimate goal of closing the gap between many, though as I mentioned, not all Indigenous communities and the rest of Australia. Even now we have some 50 peak Indigenous bodies representing around 3,000 Aboriginal organisations. They're able to liaise with the Minister for Indigenous Affairs that every Australian state and territory and indeed the Commonwealth has. Indigenous Australians, like all other Australians, already have many voices. As my colleague and good friend Warren Mundine has already pointed out, a national voice can never represent the over 500 diverse nations of Aboriginal people. I think of one of the towns that I represented for over two decades. There were four, and remain actually, four distinct Aboriginal groups. Each had their own unique voice and set of perspectives. They also had very strong views about others speaking for them. We need to realise that Indigenous peoples don't suffer from the lack of a voice or voices, but rather a lack of solutions to the cycle of fatherlessness, domestic violence, substance abuse and poor education that grips certain communities. The same tragic story plays out all too often in different parts of the country. But the solution isn't another political body, neither is it throwing more money at the problem. We've tried both of those approaches, and it's pretty evident that they don't contain the solution. It's time we moved on. Yet those who dare to speak out against the voice, or indeed simply to ask for details, run the risk of being portrayed as racists, despite in most cases being genuinely committed to Aboriginal flourishing. Racism, like all other forms of hatred, for that's what it is, is a terrible thing. We should all be committed to a better way, which might well be described as treating your neighbour as you'd like to be treated yourself. That would be a good way to start. But we've all noticed that many of those who want to throw the term racist around display a worrying and distinct inclination towards hatred of others themselves. Through our precious democratic system, Australia currently has Indigenous representation at every level, from local governments right through to national parliaments, including now 11 federal politicians. Despite being around 3.2% of the population, Aboriginal people make up 4.7% of the federal parliament. Those members have been democratically elected by the culturally diverse citizens who make up this country. The voice threatens the idea that parliamentary democracy is able to represent us all by saying, in effect, that these politicians are not suitable for representing Aboriginal communities. By instead enshrining one group's special status in the Constitution, we undermine the most basic democratic principle of equality. Our Constitution, the cornerstone of our nation's flourishing, 
rests upon the belief that all are equal under it. No one should be above the law, no one should be below the law. When we compromise that by cementing racial differences in the Constitution, we've started to lose our nation's soul. Supporters of The Voice want to rush through a major constitutional change without even giving the details on exactly what we're supporting or opposing. Despite its enormous legal and social implications, we're being actively discouraged from asking important questions about all the possible consequences. It's really important to note that when the Australian Constitution was drafted in the 1890s, there was a dedicated convention which produced a detailed final draft of the Constitution for Australians to vote on in an environment where they knew exactly what was being proposed because it was set out fully before them. I think that is a standard that we ought to maintain whenever we consider altering the Constitution. And for a constitutional change as significant as is now proposed, there ought to be far more detail on its structure, on its powers, on its influence, on how it will work politically so that Australians can make an informed choice. Furthermore, there should be greater transparency around the intention of the Prime Minister to honour the Uluru Statement in full, as he has said he intends doing. Because it clearly means that his intention is that the constitutional change that's before us is to be followed by a treaty with whom and what it might contain and what it might mean are all totally unanswered questions and following that truth telling. And I have to say, I genuinely do not know what is meant by the idea of truth telling. I think I'm entitled to know as an Australian being asked to vote on this package. And I think all Australians likewise should have that entitlement as a package. In fact, these will constitute not a minor change, not merely something to be polite about, but rather a massive change in the way Australia is governed. In my view, this runs the real risk of creating further division and resentment rather than unity, and in time to be regretted as a wrong turn. As I said, I have a deep commitment to and respect for Aboriginal people, some of whom I'm privileged to call real friends. I'm eager to find solutions to the problems they face, and I think most Australians are. But the voice to Parliament will create new problems without solving existing ones. I believe it risks pulling our nation apart rather than together as a result. I urge you to think very carefully about your vote. It matters. This is important.